Continuing with investigations, we get into forensics. Now, um, in, in so many of these areas, uh, as I pointed out with law, um, you know, get legal advice. This is specialist areas. You need specialists. What I am giving you is, is basic background, not the details that you would need to pursue any of this by yourself. All of these are specialist areas. Investigation. The management of investigation itself is a specialist area. Uh, that you might want to uh, try to aspire to, but only if you start realizing that you need a bunch of uh, specialty areas. Um, interviewing subjects is a specialty area all on its own. Um, uh, managing the investigation, as I say, you can get into lots of traps. I mentioned, you know, be extremely careful with anything, you know, that starts out looking like uh, something rather ordinary and ends up in court. Um, you know, any uh, carelessness uh, in terms of your uh, thinking that it was not terribly important, um, you know, can damage your case very severely in court. Um, and, uh, you know, here now we get into forensics. Um, there are a number of specialty areas uh, that uh, we deal with in forensics. I mean, you know, just, you know, I say forensics, you're dealing with computers, you think computer forensics. No, computer forensics is not the overall term anymore. Computer forensics, which, yes, should be sort of the overall term, uh, is now limited to data recovery from hard drives. Uh, that's that's where computer forensics has ended up. Uh, now, it is a specialty area all on its own. Uh, I think I've told you the uh, story of, uh, you know, well, uh, if I haven't, uh, uh, speaking at a conference on presenting evidence in court, uh, as I say, you know, kind of the point is you don't have to prove the other guy is wrong, you just have to prove that the other guy is an idiot. And, uh, you know, the way to do that is ask a question he doesn't know the answer to. Easy enough to find. You know, any expert, uh, there, you know, are going to be little trivial uh, details that they don't know. And in this one particular case, in terms of uh, slack space and physical versus logical slack space, uh, as a you know, virus researcher, I had run across this, and I knew that it was not an area that uh, computer forensics, in terms of recovering data from hard disks, really went into. I knew that uh, the tools don't deal with that, because they primarily deal with what the operating system can see and has done, not uh, the tricks that you can do if you know the ground programming. And so I asked this guy, uh, he fumbles the answer, uh, uh, and, you know, if, if it were a case in court, you know, that would, that would be enough. He's, you know, as an expert, I have tripped him up. And he looks like an idiot. I have harmed the opposition's case. You know, that's all you need to do. You don't have to prove that their case is, in fact, wrong. You just have to make it look unstable, um, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt. Now that, again, going back to uh, the discussions of the different types of law uh, that we have gone into, that is, um, you know, it's, it's part of the common law legal system, and it's part of criminal law in the common law legal system. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not a universal standard, but uh, it is, you know, if, if it is a criminal case that uh, is being pursued, that's all you need to do is create a reasonable doubt. And, you know, that kind of question would create a reasonable doubt. So um, 
anyways, that's as I say, computer forensics is no longer the umbrella term. Uh, the umbrella term has uh, more tended to be uh, digital forensics, which covers computer forensics in terms of uh, recovery from hard drives. The uh, network forensics. And, of course, all the traffic, all the logs, all, you know, everything that you have to go through in terms of, you know, is, you know, a, an attack packet comes in and does something nasty in your system across the network. Where did it come from? How do you know that it came from there? Can you prove it? You have to get in touch with the person who owns that system, and you have to obtain their... Uh, log files and permission to examine their log files uh, and their cooperation in uh, testifying, yes, this is, you know, the log files that we've got. So, um, you know, all kinds of areas there uh, that are difficult and, uh, you know, a specialty area. You need somebody who is not just familiar with managing networks, but really familiar with uh, the details of the networks, how things happen, uh, how things can uh, go wrong, um, what can uh, indicate a problem with what you think is happening uh, because of information that you uh, may not have. So, you know, all kinds of specialty areas, as I say. Uh, small device forensics uh, has become uh, a, a specialty in itself. Again, this is primarily data recovery, but it's small devices are uh, generally using non-volatile RAM as their memory. Now, uh, and, well, and, and their storage. In, uh, this is different than uh, hard drives, you know, ma magnetic disks and that sort of thing. And there are different technologies used for the non-volatile RAM. And some of those technologies mean that it is uh, almost impossible to get rid of data. And some of those technologies mean that it is almost impossible to recover data. So, you know, first thing to do is, is find out what uh, type of memory is on the device that you are doing. The particular device, not just the, the make and model, because very often manufacturers change uh, the technologies as uh, sources of supply vary in terms of uh, price and availability. So, you know, they can switch out different types of chips um, and uh, they have different uh, capabilities and, and different uh, forensic characteristics. Uh, so again, you know, specialty areas. Um, the... Uh, uh, oh, software forensics. Yeah. Uh, and I wrote the first book on the subject of software forensics, which rather uh, surprised me. I mean, you know, it was based on an awful lot of literature that has been published in uh, uh, periodicals uh, and, you know, all kinds of different research and has interesting ties to uh, linguistic and stylistic forensics. Um, but... Uh, again, you know, there's, there is a great deal of research still to be done in this area and a great deal of information to be obtained to ensure that we understand what we are doing in terms of uh, software forensics and, and uh, uh, determining whether the same person wrote these two programs, uh, determining authorship in general, what kind of information and uh, data can we pull out of um, 
uh, the, the code uh, of software and uh, what type of code and what can we do in that regard.